Beautiful. Well, welcome to the Thursday group meetups. I am just so appreciative, first of all, for everybody that's here. Our community members mean a lot to us and we love to contribute and lead through just connections, right? And so one of the things that we like to do is introduce ourselves and our, and our speaker today, which is Patrick. And we like to do that so that everybody knows why we're here, right? As a community to interact, enable, empower, and just visualize how we can survive, adapt, evolve, because we all have different stories and we all have different capabilities. And that's the power of community. So I'm excited for Patrick's story to be shared today. And I'm so excited for the community members to be here today. Uh, my name is Adam Griggs. I'm with Clarify. I'm your moderator. And Patrick, we're going to have everybody else introduce themselves first, and then we'll get to you. Rachel, do you want to introduce yourself? Good morning. Good afternoon. I'm Rachel McCool from GoDaddy and manager community experiences. And part of that is this amazing group. Um, I am just so appreciative of all of you um, and the participation. And it, it warms my heart. I've been doing community for a really long time. And you guys are exactly what I always hope for is that it's not about us, it's about you and it's about you connecting. And you know, thanks to Adam for being such an amazing host. And Patrick, I'm so excited to have you as a guest today. So looking forward to- Thank you, I'm excited to be here. Yeah, definitely. Thank you for being here, Rachel, and to the GoDaddy team for keeping the community as connected and you know, contribution-minded as possible. Emma, do you wanna introduce yourself and then we'll have Michelle? Sure, yeah, I'm Emma Lawrence. I'm a certified professional coach and millennial mentor. And I'm just delighted to be part of this community. I could not be happier. I was looking for a place to land where online, where I could be with like-minded people. And I feel so grateful to have ended up here. So thank you to GoDaddy and Adam, to you for doing this and just, just for keeping this going and keeping the energy so positive and uplifting. That's what community is about to me. So, yay. <laughs> yes, I have to, um, you know, basically Emma said, you know, said everything was in my head. So I'm just going to say, hi, I'm Michelle Alexander and I help people plant their money trees. But ditto on exactly what Emma said. I feel the same way. No, thank you too for being here. And we just appreciate all the contribution and connections. And to Amy and Angel who are here, thank you for being here. Um, we just appreciate those that want to also listen and learn, right? So very appreciative to the community members that are going to listen to this now and afterwards. Uh, Patrick, let's let's uh, let's get started. Let's hear about your backstory and why you need to start with a willingness to change. I think your story is impactful. Let's let's uh, let's go. Thank you very much. I'm, I'm very grateful for the community too. And my, my hat is off to you, Adam and Rachel and all the administrators of the group. Uh, there are a lot of groups out there. Uh, and, and I think um, what I've noticed with this group is that uh, the majority of the people are there to help and listen. We're all in the same boat. I mean, we just need to paddle in the same direction. And some of the other groups out there, I mean, it's, it's just sort of a doorstep to get a sales pitch. So I appreciate that this is also such a collaborative group. Um, so, I mean, my backstory is a, is a, is a rich backstory. Um, I started out, uh, you, you know, this, my, my work with consulting and, and learning to help other folks goes way back to my childhood. And, you know, like a lot of folks, um, you, you, you grow up with certain influences in your life. I, I grew up in a very uh, impoverished environment um, for a lot of reasons. And, and I, I learned that uh, we were either going to, you know, have groceries and, and pay our electric and have our mortgage or we're gonna be on the street and I needed to contribute at a young age. So I began uh, helping with my, my family and, and uh, you know, helping pay the way and making sure that we, we didn't end up on the street. And, and uh, it, it led me down a path of seeing that on that side of the street is success and where I'm standing is in the middle and that side over there is failure and I do have a choice. Uh, and, and what I do could impact others, including my family. Uh, and I think that when you have a personal vested interest in the outcome, you do a lot more. My, I love the saying, um, I thought of it when Casey was doing his meetup, that hungry dogs become the best hunting dogs. And I was a hungry dog, I wanted to eat and I didn't wanna be kicked out in the street. So I learned that uh, success is a choice, just like failure is a choice, success is a mindset, just like failure is a mindset. Um, and it led me through a life of um, positive choices. And, and uh, the other saying I cling to is that without hardship, there can be no heroes. 
So I try to keep in mind some days when it gets rough that I am my own hero. I did, I did decide to not fail, which is different than deciding to succeed. Uh, and, and sometimes that's all you need is just decide that you won't fail that, that one, in, in, uh, one moment in time. Um, fast forward to high school. I was, I, was a, I was a good athlete, not a great athlete. I was a good student, not a great student. And this was back in 1983. I know Emma thinks I'm younger than, than I am, but back in 1983, when I was in high school, uh, the army came out with be all you can be. They would pay for your college if you would go uh, join the infantry. So not that I wanted to be an infantry soldier, but that was a way to choose not to fail and, and ultimately to succeed. So I joined the army uh, and it opened so many doors for me. Um, again, very challenging, uh, but showed me that obstacles um, in my mind were bigger than obstacles that were in reality. Um, and, and so I was able to get through college, uh, thanks to Uncle Sam and the United States Army, and I'm, I'm really proud of that. Um, and I went through um, with a lot of the lessons I learned in the military into leadership roles in corporate America. I, obviously, we all start at entry level and, and climb our way up. Um, and back, you know, now there are companies that certify you in consulting, and you're a certified consulting coach. And I'm, I'm actually uh, enrolled to, to get that certification. But back in my day, um, they didn't have organizations that existed that did that. So we had to pay out of our own pocket and go to Xerox and IBM. They actually offered training. You were Xerox trained or IBM trained. So I, you know, still have those, those plaques and those awards and, and, but it, it's, it's good to stay current. And, and so that's, uh, you know, what's coming next for me. Um, but uh, like a lot of folks, I, I started my own business in 2008 and I did it because um, an employer saw things differently and, and let me go without any notice. A lot of us get into business that way. Some of us say, yes, I've always wanted to be in my in business for myself. I did too, but I just wasn't expecting to do it at that point. So I had to buck up and get things going. I started in the direct marketing world back in the days of direct mailing lists, uh, when people would actually put mail into your mailbox. Um, and my business evolved into the printing part of that, then large format print. So if you think of wall graphics, window graphics, um, and that's been my bread and butter for quite some time. Um, and, and the pandemic actually was phenomenal for me with consulting because I had done consulting jobs here and there, sales process, mindset process, building compensation plans, training salespeople, that type of thing. And when large format print took a time out because of people wearing masks and not going to public places, process improvement, mindset improvement took off. And I, and I was talking to Emma Lawrence yesterday that I'm suffering from some really good growing pains right now because my business is taking off with the consulting part of things and my business support tools haven't kept up. So I'll be reaching out to my GoDaddy friends. I, there's some tools I need to use and I'll need some help um, aligning my website, for instance, with what my offerings are today, what they'll be tomorrow. But I can say that through hardship comes heroes believe that you're a hero, believe that the hardship is temporary, find people around you that can support you, um, collaborate as much as you can and, and embrace everybody's, you know, people say diversity. When I was in the military and you got shoved into a foxhole, you didn't care what color the person was, what their religion was, you cared if they could help keep you alive. So you look, you look for people who could do different things than you because that meant you were stronger. So I say, embrace that part of the, uh, the diverse workforce and become stronger in your motion forward. That's me. I love it. I, I love that you started with positivity. First of all, one of my favorite songs is Hard Days. And the reason it is, is because you can't have good days without hard days, right? And that makes or breaks so many of us. And I love the story that you are looking at it as a choice. Are you outsourced or outrun, right? And your choice is to whether, whether or not you're going to keep up. And your background has created a level of experience and courage, but I think there's something even stronger there that aligns with the business you know, acumen that you bring today, which is, I don't want to just survive. I want to thrive. So instead of looking for people that are going to keep me from dying, it's let's keep my business from dying. Let's thrive right. together and find those resources that are going to help build momentum. And that's one of the things you and I have talked about is just the fact that it's not just about visualizing that, that goal. It's about yeah. getting up and staying relevant and maintaining momentum. And I love that. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and, and uh, you know, my, my, my mantra is that motivation is the vehicle, momentum is the fuel. 
So you could sit in the, the nicest looking vehicle that has no fuel in it and you're going nowhere. So, you know, you have to, you have to build on your momentum. It's, it's not permanent. So you have to keep seeking momentum. Um, and, and yeah, to th- you, you, you have a choice to survive or thrive. I had an interesting conversation with another consultant, you know, asking about my rates and what's your rate card and do you have a minimum of 12 sessions? Do you do 10 sessions? Blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, you know, first of all, um, what's really important to me is, is my family. I'm a new grandfather. I love spending time with my grandson. Um, I, I love my family dearly. Uh, I love my free time. I love to golf. Um, so I will set my rates based on what I'm giving up in my life uh, and how important that is to me. That doesn't mean I'm really, really expensive. That means I want to see how important it is to you if you want me to sit down with you and help you. There's ownership with my clients. They need to own this process and realize I am not the owner of your problem and I'm not the owner of your solution. I might see it from the outside and give you a different way to look at it and give you the analogy you need to move forward, but I don't have a magic wand or pixie dust. And I'm not going to just make things go away because you hire me. So if you hire me for that and you want me to charge you a rate, no problem. Uh, but I might just tell you, you're not the right fit for me because th- that's I'm really looking for that long-term partner that says, look, life is tough. My job sucks. My boss sucks. And I say, okay, let's start with that. You've defined something. Now, what can make it better? What are the steps between it sucks and it's better? How far apart are they? What are the things you control? And nine times out of 10, you're going to solve your own problem. And I'm going to be there on the sidelines of your success, cheering for you, uh, but not in a rah-rah sort of way. It's going to be that I know you. And on a Friday, you text me and say, hey, what you said on Monday worked. And I wanted to tell you about my week. And I'm going to be there to listen to you. So, you know, that's the whole part about uh, if you pursue your passions, money takes care of itself. So, you know, you can have a rate card. You can approach people like they're, you know, part of your ledger. Or you can approach them as part of your assets of your life. I love that. Assets of your life. Um, I think that that is a fantastic way to approach things. And first, congratulations on the new edition. That is just fantastic. We love hearing stories of families that are able to just be there and spend time with each other, right? And whenever there's, yeah. a, whenever there's a new edition, it's exciting. Um, and then one of the things you said was you're going to tell them about your lifestyle, right? Business lifestyle and let them determine whether or not it's important enough to take your time. And I think that yeah. that's so... That's so powerful because it drives their respect for you. And it gets back to you defining your audience, right? Right, right. Well, and that's the, that's the thing. And I, I do spend a lot of time in the, you know, in the consultation with folks. And I look for three things. Are they ready for change? Are they willing for change? And are they able to do change? So uh, I met with, a, uh, you know, the, the, I guess he's the owner of the company. He's got family, family who is uh, their silent partners. Uh, and he knows, he knows he's going in the wrong direction. His business is going in the wrong direction, I should say. Um, and I can, it's painfully obvious to me what's wrong with this business. And it's, he loves what I say, but he's got senior staff around him who are so worried about protecting their current role that they think of this year's bonus. And I'm like, dude, you're going to make a bonus this year and be out of work next year. You know, let's, let's not, you know, plant plant the, you know, plant the apple tree to, to pick all the fruit this year. Let's, let's plant a harvest for years to come. And, and so uh, I, I told him, I said, you, you love what I'm saying. You believe we can do it, but you're not willing, you're not willing to go through change. So you would rather put up with the pain of defeat and failure and you could see it coming, but that's more, that's more comfortable to you than changing, doing something a little bit different every single day. I just put on a recent podcast um, where I was, I, I, I give every one of my customers confidentiality. So I don't reveal who or what or where or when or how, but they give me uh, approval to share the highlights and they went through the same thing. I mean, they're in a, they're in technology and they believe, well, the industry's flat. And I'm like, technology is never flat. I, maybe, but they convinced themselves of all these reasons why they couldn't do something. And I'm like, tell me one reason why you could, and let's build on that. And we changed not really a lot. We looked at um, how they were spending their time with their people. They had a young workforce. They liked to socialize. I'm like, let's turn Fridays into a social day. And let's speak. So the, the, if you look for the podcast, it's called Fridays Make Your Best Mondays. And you can apply it. It doesn't have to be sales. You can apply it to any environment at all where you feel flat, you feel left behind. Onboarding is a thing of the past. Um, a lot of the customers that come to me 
I've got a couple. I've got uh, groups where I say they're about my age and they haven't sharpened their tools in a while and they feel left behind or they feel like the next generation is going to replace me and they need some help. Or I've got the generation behind me. You know, a lot of the millennials, they, they maybe grew up in an environment where texting was their main form of communication rather than written or spoken. Um, they're now, you know, anywhere from their young, you know, mid 20s to 30s and they're suddenly made managers of a group. And they've never had management training. They don't know how to confront without being confrontational. They don't know how to look at a compensation plan, set a compensation plan relative, relative to sales. And they need that help. So, you know, there is a need. And we have a lot of great resources in this group that I know when I'm over my head, like I have no problem reaching out to Emma Lawrence saying, dude, I need your help. This is not my sweet spot. And she could jump right in and I'm never going to look stupid for doing that. And there's, there's, probably 30 other Emma Lawrence's out there in that group that I just don't know yet. They're going to make me better for my clients. I love it. And I love the full circle conversation here. The fact that yeah. we have to admit what's wrong with our business is like you and I talked earlier. It's like going to a priest and it's really, really difficult to confess your sins openly. Absolutely. And yeah. I, that's, the, that's the analogy I use with folks. I'm like, you know, if, if you know a Catholic, they have the idea of they have to go to confession and confess their sins. and that's a pretty painful, that's a pretty painful process. And so when you hire a consultant, you have to be willing to say, here's what I'm doing wrong. And you have to be willing to go make change. Well, when you hire a consultant, it's like, you have to confess those sins face to face. And I would rather just lie about my sins than do that. So, I mean, that's what you run into as a consultant is you can't be so hungry to, to work for everybody that you have somebody that's not committed and they're not really being honest with what's going on. And we all know something's not right in this situation. It's time to sit down and say, time out, you know, dude, let's, let's talk about it. Forget, forget that you're a sinner. We all have sins in our business. We have sins in our life, but forget the word sin. You know, you have, you have a pebble in your shoe. I can help you get it out of there. That's what I can do. Now that pebble will get back in there and I'll be there to help you get it out down the road. But let's, let's be honest. And if you're honest and you're committed, you're ready, you're willing, you're able, then most people, they don't need me and I shouldn't be a full-time employee. I should be there to help kind of get their wheels back on the track and then they should be able to take it from there and every now and then they check in with me i love it i mean you're there to support them and enable them and really it's up to them to determine what the biggest factors are and i like that your your point of perspective isn't about what's going wrong how many reasons are wrong what are the reasons you're failing it's what is the one thing you know you can do to make a difference and build off of that because i think it's important we're so overwhelmed often with the facts that we're being pushed into this whirlwind of business and we have tasks we have to get to. And just like you said, the client that's looking for this year's bonus, their perspective is dealing with what's immediately in front of them instead of what's down the road. And if they would look back on how to build forward and build that harvest, it's a, it's a game changer. And I love that. Uh, and that's what I grew up with. I mean, you, you can, you can bitch and moan about uh, your lot in life or you can get up and do something about it. And, and my choice was, you know, like I said, it's extreme and it probably wasn't as bad as I'm making it now, but you know, if your choice is hunger or food, you're going to find a way to get food. When I was in the military, people were shooting at me. Well, you start to buddy up with everybody around you and you're hoping that they can do things different than you. Cause if you're all doing the same thing, you're not going to get anywhere. So, I mean, you know, it, it is in our mind and we do magnify things. And sometimes you just, instead of trying to do one thing, a thousand percent better, just do a thousand things, just 1% better. And really just do 100 things 1% better. And when it comes down to it, do one thing 1% better. And you'd be surprised how much better your week becomes. I love it. And there's so much positivity coming out of this. I've got to, I've got to ask the question, you know, knowing your background and your story and your business and the way that it's thriving as a consultant, why the podcast? Why contribute out there and just offer free advice? Yeah, so, um, and it's great. It's, you know, advice is free, right? And free is another price tag. So, um, but I also know that content is king. So if I had a free podcast that was just full of garbage, then I would have nobody downloading or re responding. So I know that there's some value and I've received feedback from the value. Um, and the podcast, it's kind of like looking at a cookbook and reading a recipe. It doesn't mean you know how to do the cooking and doesn't make you a master chef. And it's really a doorway for people to say, yeah, I've experienced that or I've felt that or I have that. And for, you know, there's, I will say the top of the top want to get better. The middle and the bottom aren't always sure. And they're the ones who they would rather lie about their sins. So I'm dealing with, when people come to me, they really do want to get better. Um, the podcast is sort of, a, a, from my standpoint, 
a qualifier. It qualifies people. I've listened to this and then they can go to my Patreon website and they can actually, uh, you know, whatever Patreon's fees are to interact, it's not expensive. But it, if you're willing to, you know, to, to, to become a Patreon member at the lowest level, I think it's $5 a month and you get to interact with me um, where it is literally one-on-one -on -one and focused. If you're willing to do that, you probably need some more and it probably gives me a chance to engage and talk with you in a positive way. So um, the podcast also gives me a chance to network with some really top-notch professionals. I mean, I feel honored with when I look around at my network of and the, the guests that are on the show, I, I, I'm humbled that I'm in this company of these CEOs and these, these top people who have vision that make me feel better and make me better at what I do for a living. So um, I benefit as much from doing the podcast as I do from putting the podcast out there. And, and you know, those that want the help will, will seek the help. Those that want to stop at the podcast, more power to you. But there's more out there. And so, you know, I look at it like, uh, you know, the old days in the, in the gold rush and you're panning for gold and you get this little nugget and you can go running around and tell people, I got this little nugget of gold. And if you just go a little deeper, there's a whole gold mine that you're missing if you, if you don't dig a little deeper. So that's what I'm there for is I will help you identify that there's a pile of needles out there, not a pile of haystacks. And those needles are made of gold and, and it's just there for the pickings. I love it. And, and everything you've been putting out, just the content and the context, it does get the mind thinking and it's valuable. And I think the way you do it is very approachable and your graphics are great. So thank you for your story. Thank you for sharing, you know, what it means to really maintain momentum because momentum yeah. often isn't just us. It's the people we work with that have to keep up with us. And I think that that's a powerful thing. Um, just like being here in this community, right? We're here to contribute and enable and help each other. And I love that. I love that. That's your story. Good. So what I'd love to do at this point, since, you know, we've kind of got some background on how you help people and in your story, I'd love to open it up for comments and kudos to the community members that are here. If uh, anybody wants yeah. to. I'm going to, I'm going to go just because um, in a few minutes, uh, I know Jonathan and I both need to drop off, but Patrick, you're so wise. I just love it. It's like everything you're saying. I'm like, yes, yes, yes. So it's really exciting. Um, I can somewhat relate to your, your backstory of growing up. I, I don't feel like I was quite, quite there, but close. And yeah. I have, um, in my life, I've been always fascinated by people who push past, like, you know, how they were brought up or, or messages that other people gave them about themselves and succeed and then others that just can't or don't and yeah. to your point yeah. about just just you know making an attempt um so many people get really really stuck um and it's, a, yeah. it's so it makes me sad when i see that um yeah I, I see potential in in people sometimes that they don't see in themselves but i just i love what you're doing and i wow it's just so powerful and i also really love that you're picking to choose people to work with. Um, I think that's really yeah. important, even for people who are new in their businesses, because if you don't love your clients or your, or your customers, like you're not going to like what you do. Um, absolutely. So, absolutely. I do it for me as much as I do it for them uh, yeah. because you're right. It'll drain you. It'll drain you real fast when you're working. It, it's like you're working with the wrong person. It's kind of like somebody blindfolding you and telling you to, you know, to fix a wall and you're like, where do I begin? You know, you don't yeah. know how to do it. Yeah, that's good. Well, and, and to your story, you know, a lot of people had hardships growing up. I'm not the only one. And my and people had it worse than me. And my whole thing is this, you know, life may be kicking your ass, but if life is kicking your ass, you're still in the fight and the fight's not over. So go watch Rocky Balboa and you'll keep getting up because you could win at the last minute. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's a good, it's a good model. Um, I've got to echo everything Rachel said, but one, you, there was a bunch of stuff you said that stuck out to me and I took, I took notes on. I have a little running notepad from all of these different meetups that we have and I have, there's real value here. But what I really, I really loved how you described the, the podcast and you described it like a, it's like a cookbook and that I, I feel like a lot of people who do something like that, they do, they get that thought like, oh, I should be, I should really be charging for this or like this is, you know, I want to help people, but I still want to be able to, to, you know, take care of myself and pay my bills and not shortchange my business. And forgive the echo. I'm, I have a new, I have a room in my apartment that I'm looking to furnish, but right now we've got a rug and that's all we're working with. <laughs> um, uh, I think it speaks so highly to 
you as a consultant and you as a business person is wanting to be an ally to these people who work with you the, with the fact that you do want to provide this information for people to access for free if they want to. I think that right. speaks much volumes about the integrity of who you are as a business person and just saying like, listen, like this is, this is, this is info for free, but unless you have the tools to implement it, it's going in one ear and it's going out the other. And hopefully you can absorb a few things from it. But I, I found that, that the way you explained it, like a cookbook really just set off a light bulb in my head that because I, I, I've had that thought before where I'm just like, oh my God, they buy your cookbook and why would they ever buy another one from you? Like, what you doing? But right. it's the experience right. of it, it's the process of learning how to implement those. And I, I think that is so staggering. I really think it's wonderful that you have processed it that way and you went after it in the way that you have and you are still so, so motivated to provide this value for people um, knowing that the ones who are really going to want to take something away from it know to take the next steps and to really hold themselves right. accountable. Well, and I'm and Jonathan, you're, you're spot on and I appreciate your input. And I'm, I'm fortunate that I do have, you know, my large format print customers. I mean, like I said, in the beginning of this, that pays my bills. It, mm -hmm. it affords me the luxury of, of being patient. And, and there are folks who are, they're consulting and they don't have that. And there's, you can feel desperate and you can feel that you, I got to charge for everything. And, and, and it is a, it is a shorter term mentality. And there is that feeling of desperation. It's hard to step back. And, and, and a lot of, what I do, I mean, I've been doing it for 30 some years now. I mean, you know, life has a way of teaching you lessons, whether you want it to or not. And I always learned that, you know, if I wanted to be that master chef, I needed to get side by side with the master chef. And that's the only way I was going to get better. And that's the only way I was going to change it for myself in a permanent sense, not a temporary sense. So thank you. You bet. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. I just have to echo the recipe uh, <laughs> metaphor here because people try recipes and they determine whether or not they like cooking, right? And your contribution with these podcasts is them, them tipping their toes in the entrepreneurial circle and saying, do I like being a business owner? Do I want to try it? And if they do, they're going to run, they're going to make problems. And when they create problems, they're going to have hard days. You're going to help them through their hard days. And then they're going to have great days. And that's a big Absolutely. difference right there. So I love it. Yeah, I definitely do. Well, Patrick, you know, I'm a big fan. So kudos all around for everything you do for the attitude, Thank that you. Bring, you know, and for the integrity that you've had clearly all your life, you know, from your choices as a young person, all the way through to this moment and the choices you're to making. My, to my old man days. Thank you, Emma. Yes, your old man days. Uh, <laughs> you're welcome. Um, oh, here's a question I have for you is where do you feel your creativity came from? And this question came up to me when I listened to your podcast about Fridays are the new Mondays. And I thought, mm -hmm. well, how did he come up with that? And then, mm -hmm. and then also as you talk in your podcast and in our conversations and here today, you use metaphors all the time. You know, images and metaphors to describe things. And that's a very creative way to think. And yeah. I'm just wondering, is it, were you always creative in that way? I mean, did you? Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I didn't learn. I mean, it was just something in me. Like I think, I think in pictures and I, and I know that I speak in pictures and sometimes the picture is worth a thousand words and it makes sense. And I think you and I were talking about that or Adam and I were talking about this where when I talk with people about consulting and I talk about, you know, you're on a football field and you're standing in the right back end zone and you, you have to get to the back left end zone. That's your goal. And so people go, well, if I could just get to the end zone to take the straight line down the sidelines. And then, so then we say, let's focus on the left side. You have to go there and, and so on and so forth. But when we put your pictures of your, of your rewards and you start getting goals achieved because you get awards or rewards, you start going faster towards that. So then we talk about the analogy of tipping the, you know, putting you on a skateboard, pushing you down the sidelines, or tipping the tip of the skateboard and pushing on an angle. And then once you realize you can get there quicker, how much faster can you, you know, push yourself and get about yourself? All these analogies, all these little pictures, people go, yeah, yeah, no, I get it, I get it. I'm like, really? Because it just came to, my, came to my head. So I can't practice it. It's just kind of how I think and how I speak. And some people go, you, you, dude, you lost me. I, oh. I don't understand. I, I'll refer to movies and books and analogies. And sometimes people go, I didn't read the book. You know, I didn't watch the movie. I don't know what the hell you're talking about. Right, right, right. right. I, try, I try to keep it, I try to keep what I say clear and concise and something that like every level could understand it. I don't try to use big words. I remember, I remember when people started using the word pivot, like they couldn't say pivot enough. They tried to find ways to put pivot into their conversation um, or lean into it. And I'm like, lean into it. I mean, every time I lean into something, it hit me hard. I didn't want to lean into anything. 
What does that mean? Lean into it. I want to give people input where they go, yeah, I get it. And I can walk away and I can do that. And I don't have to go back to Penguin. What does that mean to lean into it? I'm not, did I just lean into it? You know, like that Geico commercial. Am I hashtagging? I don't want people asking that question. I want you to know what you're doing. If the analogy gets you there, then we keep it going. Yeah. Because I am excited to be here. I love this platform. And like I said, I echoed everything Emma said. And I just love Patrick. I've never met him. But something about the first thing I read, I really liked. So then we got connected and something Emma said. So I have to listen to that podcast. I have it saved. <laughs> but I enjoyed it. And then he was going to be on this week. I was like, don't forget, you have to get on this meeting this week. So everything he said just really touched something about me and who I am. So I appreciate it. And I remember, um, I think Rachel was saying something about the choices that you make. I've always been that person that I always had the I'll show you attitude. So you can say what you want about me bad or, you know, I'm not going to amount to this. or I'm not going to have this or do this or whatever. But in my mind, I was saying, I'll show you. So when you have that, you can do those better things instead of saying, oh, well, that's just me. You know, that's one thing I hate when I hear people say, um, oh, that's just the way it is. Like, really? No, yeah. it's not. You know, and all the other things like I'm, and I'm not a bandwagon person either. So when you said that thing about pivot, I was going to be Jonathan this week and actually fall out the chair because <laughs> that I hate that. And even when I'm doing my own videos, I hate when I do bring up all the pandemic and because I'm, you know, you're just tired of saying that. And OK, yeah, we know that that's it already. But, you know, just yeah. to echo, like I said, off of what everyone else said is that. Um, I, I mean, this has been absolutely great and I enjoy this and I'm grateful that I was here to hear Patrick talk about this and. I'm week. grateful I finally got to meet you because I, I see your face and we connect, but it's always nice to hear someone's voice. And uh, and I, I, I totally agree with you. It's, um, you know, you just have to be real with yourself and be real with other people. And that's, if you're real, the real things happen. And that's, and that's like any relationship in life. Absolutely. Absolutely. Especially about the client part, you hit so on it because I had to go through that. And, you know, you could talk to somebody for five minutes and I'm like, you know what, this is not going to work out. So I'm really yeah. glad you went somewhere else, you know. But you have yeah. to know know that you can work with this person because everything you said, you ha they have to be ready. You know, if you want to get your finances together, you have to be ready to work on it. I, I don't, I'm not right. going to have a magic wand. I can tell you what I did. So I didn't right. have to cry when they told me to leave my job. It like, you know, right. that happened to you. So the same difference. But again, thank you so yeah. much. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah, no, I, I have no problem telling people that I'm not your solution because, you know, you're not like this, that, that particular case I was talking about. Um, I said, you're ready, but your your senior staff isn't, they're too important to you. So you're, you together, you're going to go, you know, you're going to go down together and that's okay. You can do that. You don't have to hire me. Nobody's obligated to hire me. Um, and I'm not, like I said, I'm not really hung up on the rate. So if people have a limitation in their budget, but they want to improve, guess what? There were times when I needed a hand up too, not a hand out, but a hand up. I needed someone to help. I needed a mentor. Um, so it, if you're, if you're hung up on the rate, you're going to be a consultant for a short period of time. And if you're, if you're hung up on it, the people, you're going to be employed forever. You just got to, but you do have to value your own time and you have to value what's in it for them. And they have to be willing to, again, commit. This is their problem, not mine. And, and so I think the more honest you can be, just the easier it is to have a conversation and get to the next step. But dancing around it, Michelle, you know, you, you deal with people that they go nowhere. And then they, then they complain to you about, well, I'm not sure it really worked. I'm not really sure I got my money's worth. No, you didn't because you didn't do anything about it. That's why you didn't get your money's worth. Here's your money back. I love it. I love it. I love the hand up comment too. And just the conversation today, you know, just to, to revisit a few things here, Emma, you know, asked you how you're so well ordered, how you've got all these metaphors ready and you're just quick witted. And there's a lot of work that goes into that. You, you've obviously mastered your craft and your interaction with people is genuine, which allows you to see so many perspectives and I think that that kind of leans into Michelle's comments in the fact that we are tired of saying the same old thing, the pandemic, pivot, do this. People want to know, how can I have action today? How can I take control? And how can I have great days tomorrow? And what you're doing, Patrick, in, in your shares and in your contribution as, um, as a consultant is enabling them to do that. But so much more than that, you being here today, sharing your story and just showing that your business is always constantly evolving too, and you're trying not to be outpaced and outrun. I think that that is powerful and it's important because our audience might shift, our needs will change, and 
having people around us that allow us to grow into the people that we're capable of is just so powerful. So I, I love the story. I love the share. And I'm just so appreciative of you sharing today, Patrick, and the community members being here and offering their comments. Thank you. Thank you. Glad to be here. I want to say one thing. Sorry, this is Julie. I got on late, but based on the comments, I cannot wait to listen to it from the beginning. <laughs> I'm sorry I missed it. So I got all the questions in the comments, and now I'm super excited about hearing it from the beginning. Super. Um, it's great. I love what you have been saying, and it's right up what I've been thinking and how um, developing stick and stuck. So um, I'm really looking forward to starting it over. Julie, I would love if you reached out because I love the stick and stuck and, and uh, we could easily brainstorm and put our heads together. I mean, it, you have a great business model. Um, so yeah, reach out because I would love to just chat with you. That would be great. Uh, me too. Yeah, me too. Awesome. I'll do that. All right. Beautiful. Well, I appreciate everything you've given us today, Patrick, um, especially the recipe, right? You gave us so much that we can put into action today. We can go out there and see if we really like what we're doing. And if not, we've got to make a change and it's time to focus on where we're going to build from. So before we let you go, one of the things yeah. I, really, I love to have our community members do is connect with you. So where can we send people to follow up with you and connect? That's going to be most impactful. Yeah, I think uh, if they go through my LinkedIn profile, um, there's you know all my contact information there, so you can get to the, right to the podcast. You can get to my website, uh, which right now is going through uh, it's going through a change, but it's it looks like a printer's um, website. So just bear with me, but it, there is a contact us information. Um, I'll give you my cell number. It's two two four two one seven five zero six three. I'm sorry, that was my office. My my cell is two two four four five six four six nine two. Text me or call me. And then you can email me, Patrick, at pklistmarketing.com. So there you go. I'm out there for all of you. Just putting it out there. I love it. That's confidence right there. Just embracing the community. I'm just going to tell everybody I can't work with you. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, I appreciate everybody that was here today, the community members and this conversation. Uh, this is always the highlight of my week. And I'm excited for the upcoming ones with Emma and, and Michelle as well. So thank you to everybody that jumped on and just supported us today. And, you know, hopefully you guys have a fantastic weekend and we kick off the, the end of this year. Sounds good. I look forward to talking to you guys. Thanks. Bye. Bye guys. Thanks.